I wanted to make an updated video about my workflows in 2024. It's now the 3rd of May and things have changed a lot since I last talked about them. So these are the three kind of main questions that I want to talk about in this video. But I just want to let people know that I'm currently producing, or we as a company are currently producing about 500 blogs a month. And so I think that I kind of know what I'm talking about and I want to kind of share all of the knowledge that I've picked up in the last few months. So if you kind of look at um, most videos on the helpful content update, like a lot of people are saying, you know, SEO is dead. Um, how mo most people are kind of focusing on how to get back from the update. I seem to be one of the few who is just continuing to talk about, you know, the, the truth of the matter, the, S the AI, AI content has not changed whatsoever. Now, I do have a new theory as to why a lot of these people got hit. It was actually a comment that I had on one of my YouTube videos. Now, you might not know this, but when an image is created, there is something called metadata. Now, I might not be able to show this on, uh, on, on this website as an example, but I will try. So if I right click, save as. Okay, so yeah, this is just, it's a web piece. So that, that's actually not useful to us. Let's scroll down. Okay, so this is actually not creating images. This is just really, really bad. But basically, my new theory, uh, thanks to the comment, whoever left the comment, thank you for that. Um, I actually think it's because of DALI and metadata in images. And if it's not that, it's just a mix of all the other things that we've talked about so far. So let's get into the meat and bones of this video. So the first question, which AI model do I use to create all of my content? Now, this might be obvious, the main thing I actually use right now is Claude Opus. Now, I do not use Claude Sonnet. I do not use Claude Haiku. I only, I exclusively use Claude Opus. But I do want to talk about a few things because a lot of people just assume that I'm generating all of my content programmatically. But I'm actually not. If I scroll down this conversation with Claude, you can see that I'm still, uh, in one month, I had about 50 conversations with Claude. And then so far this month, I've already had eight or so. And you can see that some of them are actually articles. So I'm not doing everything programmatically. I'm doing maybe 75% of things programmatically. And then for the more complicated people who have difficult websites or difficult niches, I'm still using the front end of Claude. Now, one of the big problems with Claude is of course that it has a limit. But if you go to console.anthropic.com slash dashboard, they actually have something that is pretty much the exact same as OpenAI's Playground. So once you're on here and once you're, yeah, once you're good to go, you can just press start prompting with Claude here. And this is actually just basically the Playground on OpenAI. So you can put this to uh, max tokens, and then we'll just give it this prompt, which is the prompt that I'm gonna give you at the end of this video. I'm gonna talk about the prompt, but let's just say um, that we give it this prompt, and then all we do is hit run here, and it will actually write the article, okay? Obviously, we need to still give it information, blah, 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 and I will be talking about that as well, but that's pretty much it. Hit run, it will start writing just as, um, just as normal. I just put a random user quote here. Yeah, user thing here. Yeah, so it's not actually doing it because I haven't given it the information that it needs in order to write. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to talk about the console because I'm using this a lot. Basically, the limit of Claude Opus in the front end is very, very low. So it's actually pretty necessary to use the front end. This is also really good for coding. Okay, so let me just show you why I say that. I only discovered this recently. There's actually two reasons it's really it's actually better than the playground. Well, I'll show you now. So make me a Python script that automatically uploads to WordPress. Now you might know that when you when you do this with um OpenAI's playground, it looks like this, right? But the really cool thing about the Anthropic console is that actually has this little markdown button and it actually gives you code just like the front end of ChatGPT or just like the front end of Claude. This is a huge improvement. This is super, super necessary. And it's the main reason that I actually use the console 
uh, is, is this because it's, it's super, super useful. This is really good for coding. This video is not about coding, but I just wanted to mention that. Okay, let's move on to the second question. Which techniques I personally use to create all of my content? This is a really, really good question. Okay, so this is a practice Shopify store. This is supplies for hunters that we're making or supplies for out... Uh, what's it called? Bushwhacking, or whatever it's called. Bushcrafting. So something that's really, really cool about Shopify is you can actually go into the, um, the back end, the, sorry, the sitemap, even though the website is not live. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this tool right here called sitemap to clipboard. I want to show you my exact process. So in order to get all of the information that we need for an article, we're going to be using something called sitemap to clipboard. So I'm going to open up the products sitemap at the top here and i'll open the collections sitemap as well now this is just an example a lot of these collections are going to be deleted and uh yeah there are way too many products um but it's just an example so we'll click uh https and then we'll press process images and then that actually just gives us a download exactly like the python script that i had to make for myself so this is a really really good time saver so it's called sitemap to clipboard what that did was it downloaded all of the images that I need, the URLs of the images. So if I just go to this URL, for example, you'll see that it's a picture of whatever the hell this is. <laughs> I don't actually know anything about hunting, just so you know. So I, I can't actually tell what things are and what they do, but that's okay. And then we'll do the same thing with the collections. We'll just press start like this, and it says success. Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll open another notepad here so that I have two notepads. You'll see why in a second. So that's two notepads. Perfect. What else do we need? We need a keyword. But Hamish, you're on ChatGPT. Why are you on ChatGPT? ChatGPT has some interesting things to it still. I'm not saying ChatGPT is completely useless. If you go on Explore Custom GPTs and type Topical Authority, this is the easiest way to get to do keyword research. If you're too lazy to do keyword research properly, this is a very, very good alternative. So it's this one right here. I'll leave a link to it in the description as well. It's the one with the Phoenix. It's got 4.8 out of five with 300 plus ratings, which is pretty impressive considering um, a lot of my other GPTs do not have anywhere near that amount of uh, good upvotes. So we'll write black uh, selling, blacksmithing supplies. So I'm, I'm, Selling, I'm saying selling here because I specifically want e-commerce based keywords. I don't just want, you know, how to get into blacksmithing, blah, blah, blah. I really, really want all of the possible keywords uh, to be about selling. So that's fine. The first one, blacksmithing tools overview, that's fine. Modern blacksmithing techniques, that's fine. I believe you can actually just press stop now and then say, now give me the sub pillar pages. And it'll actually just start giving you the sub pillar pages. I'm doing that because I'm impatient. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. Okay, perfect. So types of anvils and their uses. This is a perfect article, okay? Because there are, I can't do control F. If I do control F to find something on here, my whole computer freezes. Oh, wait, I'm on my computer, not my laptop. Never mind. Um, so yeah, we'll do control F here and we'll write anvils. Oh, I'm doing blacksmithing. My bad. Wait. That's a different niche that we're doing. Sorry, guys, my bad. Um, selling, hunting, supplies. Okay, so we'll press stop again and we'll say, please give me the sub pillars for hunting optics. Because we're not actually selling, um, I don't want to say the word in case I get demonetized, but we're not actually selling the thing that you need to do this. <laughs> we're just selling um, kind of the accessories. I don't really want to sell those, this. I don't, I don't want to sell this. So we're just selling uh, like, you know, scopes and things like that, basically. Okay, so yeah, perfect. This is good. So detailed look at the various scopes. So if we do control F and write scope, you'll see that there are 72 potential collections here. And if I do control F on the products and do scope, you can see 243 potential products. So you can see very easily how we could very, very quickly and very, very easily make an article about this topic. So what we'll do is we'll grab this and we will go to the prompt which again i'm going to be talking about the prompt in a minute but so we'll put the keyword here and we'll change the website okay perfect so now what we need to do 
And like I said, you can do this programmatically or you can do it like this. So we'll give it the prompt and then we'll give it the first set, which are the collections. And then we'll give it the second set, which are the products. And then we'll just hit go. That's actually all you need to do. So you can see how you could very, very easily make it programmatic. This is too long. I did not realize. Uh, which one's too long? So we're going to have to just uh, wait. It's just half it, I guess. Kind of annoying, but it's okay. This works, it actually works better programmatically um, than it does using the front end of Claude. Unless it's a really difficult niche that needs a bit more care or that the uh, client has, you know, said they don't want this or, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes Claude doesn't really handle that very well. Okay, so we'll let that run. Uh, that should work perfectly fine. We could do the same here if we wanted to. We could use Anthropic as well. And that's kind of the base level of what I am doing to create content for a lot of people. Now, I know that the first question will be, what about if you're not an e-commerce website? All you need is to change a few words in this prompt and to change the information you're giving it and it will no longer be an e-commerce client or e-commerce article. It'll actually become whatever the hell you want it to. It's super flexible. You can basically do whatever you want with it. Okay, so let's have a little look through the prompt while that's loading. It, it might take a while because I've given it a lot of um, images there. So yeah, this is, the, this is the prompt. Embed images, embed internal links with Markdown. Write a 1,500 word article. Write 20 titles and two paragraphs per title with formatting like tables, embeds, internal links, and lists. Do not use any placeholder information. Make the content about the company. Do not invent links. Use at least 10 embeds and 10 collection internal links per article. Please generate an article about the keyword that based on the following information. Please be creative when writing. Focus on writing good e-magazine style content, but from the perspective of the business. I have these products I'm writing for supplies for hunting. These are all the products they sell and collections of products they sell. I want you by embedding images to make a rankable SEO optimized listicle article about the keyword. You should use a lot of tables and other formatting. Do not use complicated language. You're writing for, I should get rid of that. That's fine, I'll just leave it. You're working for working class workers. I wouldn't actually recommend keeping that in your prompt. Um, it's not needed. Please use sentence case. This is vital. This is also not needed. I, I, this is just more for testing for me. Don't use crazy language, but give lots of interesting information and make it like a journal, journal style advertising of these specific products. In the article, please embed some of these collections. I include the collections in the prompt as well. Please use headers such as H1 on the top header and then H2 and H3 throughout the article. And be considerate about where you place both the collection embeds and the collection links, and that you use appropriate SEO optimized anchor text for internal links. So let's press copy here. We'll go to Markdown to HTML, Control A, Control V. And let's just get rid of the, the top. I think 20 is a bit ambitious. I don't think 20 is. I think 20 might be too many, maybe. 4, 5, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we'll do it. We'll just change the number to 11. It's fine. It's not a big issue. You'd have to go through and change this every time. Uh, let's grab this HTML and we'll go to W3 Schools Try It Editor. Um, just so that we can see what the content actually looks like. So control A, control V, run again. And yeah, this is the end result. So we have some really nice, um, yeah, it's just really nice. You can see it's picked all of the scopes. These are all scopes. These are all scopes specifically for that type of, I don't even want to say the word. Again, I'm really trying to avoid saying the word, guys. Um, but for that, you can see it's it's worked really, really well. That's pretty much it, guys. This is my current best method of writing content. The prompt that I've just given away in the description of this video is very similar to the prompt that will be used in the final uh, SaaS tool that we're creating to do basically this, uh, but, you know, in bulk. But the prompt is slightly different. This is like a watered down version of the prompt. Um, but yeah, it still works incredibly well. Opus is an absolute beast at choosing products. You can see these are all exactly what they should be. It's it's just beautiful, honestly. I'm super, super happy with the results there. Thank you for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. And I shall see you very, very soon with some more content.
Peace out.